Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Thursday, December 10th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Didion. My name's Friday. I had to report to the police academy firing range at noon. It was 7.55 a.m. when I checked into room 27A. Robbery. Hi. Hi, where you been? Down the hall looking for a letter. Said it was coming air mail special. Who's it from? My cousin up north. Oh, you mean the one up in Frisco? Works at the police department? Yeah, Bert. Bert Lynch, you know. Works out of robbery? Yeah, I know. Joe, they don't like it up there if you call it Frisco. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. San Francisco, I'm sorry. My hometown, you know. Yeah, I know. Well, anyway, I called him last night in San Francisco. All three of his kids had their tonsils out the same day. Thought it might be a nice call and see how they were. All three at once, huh? Yeah. Well, tonsils are nothing these days. No, pretty simple nowadays. How the kids make out? Good, they're home already. Well, what's the letter got to do with all this? Oh, well, my cousin told me he was sending some information down on four pretty rough characters. Thinks they're heading our way. Sending mug shots, too. You and your cousin running a detective agency on the side, are you? Well, it's a little irregular, but the official correspondence will come a little later. What do you know about the guys, anything? Well, they almost killed a man. I didn't get any details. It's all in the letter. Ought to be here in a minute. Said he mailed it at noon yesterday. Robbery Friday. Who? Yeah, he's right here. Just a minute. Tony? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Sure. Well, I'll be glad to. Well, he's here if you want to talk. Okay. Right, Bill? I'll tell him. Okay. See ya. What was it? It's Wilson down in auto theft. They want you to go down and act as interpreter for a couple of Mexican girls. How about it? They're pretty. You're not going down there to marry him. I bet you wow him at parties. You bet. <laughs> See you later, Tony. Right. There's nothing much doing. Pretty slow day, huh? Yeah. I gotta go up to the academy at noon. Gotta qualify. Gee, I'll go with you. If nothing happens, I'll go. Okay. You know, Joe, these days don't come along often enough for me. If they did, we'd be out of a job, wouldn't we? It was one of those rare, slow days. I spent a couple of hours going over the daily reports, sharpened a few pencils, cleaned out my locker. At 10.15 a.m., Frank walked into the squad room. Oh, hey, Joe. Yeah? Came. What's that? Letter from my cousin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it came just this minute. Well, aren't you going to open it up? It's addressed to you, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joe, you got a million of them. <laughs> yeah, there's a mug shot. What's it say? Following four men wanted for robberies, auto thefts, and safe burglaries in San Francisco Bay Area. Cliff Small, 19, George Shum, 20, both escaped from Preston. Wait a minute, let's check the numbers there. Yeah. 460, yeah, there they are. Yeah. Julius Carver, 18, Fred Malik, 20, both Army deserters. It's those two there. Yeah. Well, it checks out with that APB from San Francisco last week. What well, the records look like? Anything there? Well, this guy Small shot an Army captain during an argument at a bar. On two jobs, these men shot it out with us and escaped. Information shows all four left for Los Angeles several days ago. Driving stolen car, probably blue Ford using coal plates. See the mug shots. Well, now we know who we're looking for. Does your cousin tell us where? Just a couple of nice girls got mixed up with the wrong guys. Got to call us tonight. Just a minute, Tony. Yeah? Take a look at these pictures. What do you got? You'll have to hear from my cousin, Tony. Mm -hmm. Says these guys are headed this way in a stolen car using coal plates. That's how these girls were picked up. Hot car. They went for a ride with a couple of guys they met in the movie. Car ran out of gas. Boys ducked out. The girls got picked up. They got any lead on the guy? No, not a thing. Young guys? Around 20. You think they might be the ones from Frisco? I don't know. We ought to talk to the girls anyway. Where you got them? They're still in the interrogation room. Speak any English at all? Not enough to make any sense. Oh, 
That's Dolores, and this one's Maria. Oh, yeah. uh, señoritas, estos señores son empleados del robbery detail. Desean hacer a ustedes algunas preguntas. Nosotras no hicimos nada. She says they didn't do anything. Well, I suppose they've told you everything they know already, huh? Well, they're not much help. They say they don't know anything about the guys they were with. Show them the pictures, ask them if they've ever seen them before. Uh, ¿Conocen ustedes a estos individuos? Mm, estos dos. Estos son los muchachos. These the guys that took them out last night? Ask them, will you? ¿Quieren decir que estos dos son los que las elevaron anoche? Sí, ellos son. Carver and Malik, the army deserters. Ask them to describe them, will you? ¿Cómo eran los muchachos? Pues ya le dijimos, estaba oscuro y estuvimos en el carro todo el tiempo, pero parecían guapos y hablaban bien. She says they sat in the car all the time and it was dark, but they looked very handsome. They talked nice. Where'd the fellas pick them up? They told me in front of the Jubilee Theater, second and Broadway. Then what? The girls couldn't understand English, but they understood when the boys motioned them to hop in. ¿Han aceptado ustedes paseos con extranjeros antes? Por supuesto que no. María creyó haberlo visto en la iglesia el domingo. ¿Qué? Creyó haberlo visto en la iglesia el domingo. She says no, María thought she recognized him from church Sunday. Pero estaba equivocada. But she was mistaken. Well, the boys couldn't talk Spanish, the girls couldn't speak English. Must have been some date. Where'd they go on this ride, Tony? They don't know the streets, they just know they got to the beach and then turn around about halfway back when the car ran out of gas. All right, ask him again. See if you can't get Maria over there to talk, will you? Maria, ¿qué camino tomaron para ir a la playa? Primero paramos cerca de un hotelito y esperamos mientras los muchachos llevaron un perrito a su cuarto. Dolores remembers that they stopped near a little hotel. The girls waited while the boys took a little puppy out of the car and put it in their room. A dog? Now, if they don't know where the hotel was, maybe they can tell us what it was near, huh? ¿Qué edificios había cerca del hotel? En la esquina había una estación de gasolina. She says there's a gas station on the corner. What else? ¿Qué más? Del otro lado de los rieles había dos o tres garajes. ¿Qué? Dos o tres garajes. She says across the car tracks there were two or three big garages. Yeah. Could be in the West Lake District. A lot of garages, second-rate hotels out there. Could be any place. Might be East First Street. Sounds a little like that district. Maybe Grand Avenue down around Pico. Pico, ahora me acuerdo, esa calle era Pico. We took the girls with us and we drove out to Grand and Pico, then up and down Pico slowly until the girls pointed out a hotel just south of Flower Street. They weren't sure. Frank and I went in the hotel to check it out. How are you? Police officer. We're looking for Julius Carver and Fred Malik. They stay in here. What's the names? I, I can't hear you over the vacuum. Julius Carver and Fred Malik. No, nope, not here. Take a look at these pictures, will you? Well, could have been two of the boys who checked out this morning. But they didn't look as tough as this. How many were there? Four. Here are two more pictures. Would you look at these, please? Well, could be. They're about the right age. How long did they stay? Just two nights. They have a pup with them? What? I say, did they have a pup with them? A puppy dog? Yes, they did. Yes, sir. Little collie pup. Did they pay up? Uh, little collie pup. No, I say, did they pay up? Oh, no. No, they skipped out, owing me two days. Wonder if we could see how they registered, please. What? Uh, hey, Colonel, will you shut off the vacuum, please? Well, that's a wonderful machine. Wish I had one. Doesn't sound too loud to me, nice and quiet. Oh, it's not the vacuum. I'm a little deaf. Oh, why don't you get a hearing aid? I got one. Rigged it up myself. Not practical, though. Why is that? No good in automobiles. I wonder if we could see how they registered, please. No need to shout. We use cards here. Now, let me see. Ah, yes, here they are. Bob Reynolds, Jack Sharp, Jim Smith, and William Grant. Las Vegas, Nevada. You must have picked those names out of a hat. No, we use cards here. Did they say where they were going? Nope, no forwarding address. Did they write those cards out themselves? You bet they did. That's the law. Do you mind if we borrow them for a while? We'll have them photostatted and return to you. Well, we're supposed to keep them, you know. Well, you'll get them back. Well, I like to do everything legal. Those boys in some kind of trouble? Did they leave anything in their room? If they did, it's all in the vacuum. If they happen to come back, give us a ring, will you? Here's our card. Number's right there. Robbery division. Who'd they rob? They took you for two days' rent. No, no, you're wrong. It's supposed to be bent. 
took the two witnesses back to the office and dropped off the registration cards in handwriting. 2 p.m., Jack Creasy met us in front of the hotel. He told us that he and Tony Chavez were checking out the parking lots in the neighborhood for stolen cars. Frank and I started running down the other hotels. In the next three hours, we talked to a dozen desk clerks and rooming house managers. Always the same answer, no. And that's the way it went. It was dark out now, and it was getting cold again. We walked back to Pico on Flower Streets to pick up Jack and Tony. Hi. Jack's right at the corner. We got a hot car staked out. See it? Black Merc. Yeah. Just half a block from the hotel where the guys checked out. Did you find anything in the car? Keys still in it, nothing else. Well, they could have stolen it last night after they left the girls, huh? I called in and checked. It was taken in front of 1192 Dahaney Drive between 2 and 4 this morning. We got out of Code 5. Well, that's about six blocks from where they ditched the car with the girls in it, isn't it? Well, they were out of gas, all downhill. Would have been the natural way for them to go. Well, it could be the right car. We better keep the stake out, huh, Tony? Yeah. You do any good? No. Better stay with that car anyway, huh, Tony? Right, Joe. You know where we'll be. See you later. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe it's the same guys, maybe not. Yeah, same neighborhood. A couple of things might tie in. Can't be sure. Sure making a lot of headway, aren't we? But all we know is they're in town. Yeah, and it's a good-sized town. Right now, it's the biggest in the world. <laughs> Seven p.m. We knew the four gunmen were in town. We knew they'd been seen. We figured there was no reason for them to skip town until they pulled a job or heard that we were looking for them. Time was in their favor. Time to rob, time to kill, and time to get away. The check on the hotels continued. We left Jack Creasy and Tony Chavez on the stakeout, and Frank and I picked up the hotel routine, one place after another. 8.30 p.m. We checked the next hotel on the list. What are you doing down there? There aren't any vacancies. Police officers. Uh-huh. All right, come on. Get up out of there. Here I am. There now. Isn't that better? Yeah. Why don't you take a look at some pictures for us, will you? Why? We want to see if you can identify the men. No, they don't look familiar to me. But you haven't looked at them yet. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, that's all right. Now, look, they may be carrying a collie pup with them. Oh, a collie pup? Well, let me see those pictures again. Sure, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, you didn't take a picture of the pup, did you? No, we didn't. Oh, it's a nice little doggy. Well, how about it? Do you think they look familiar to you? Well... Yes, I think I remember them. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, I remember you. Oh, yeah. The nice boys. Every, yeah, I, I remember these fellas now. Nice fellas. You know what since this? What's that? Picture of the little doggy. That's what did it. Since the whole thing. Are they here? Uh, no. Now, look, are they registered here? Nope, they aren't. Just told you that. I checked out of their room this morning. Well, they say where they were going? Nope. Nope, they didn't. Just took that dog and left. They didn't leave any forwarding address? No. Nope. Well, do you know where they were going? Sure. All right. Back here. That's anyone can plainly see. What's that? Left their baggage. Said they were going to pick them up. Well, then they're going to come back, aren't they? As anyone can plainly see. files of the Los Angeles Police Department, there are countless case histories that never got space in the daily newspapers. The case of Cliff Small, George Shum, Julius Carver, and Fred Malik was one of these. Four young hoodlums wanted for a series of robberies and petty burglaries. These men were armed, and they'd shown that they wouldn't hesitate to shoot. By comparison with a sensational crime headline, the news value of the story rated one inch of type on the fourth page of the second edition. 
Yet the line separating these four young thieves from banner headlines and back page space is much thinner than the average citizen realizes. I phoned the office and asked for two men to cover the stolen car. As soon as the replacements arrived, Jack Creasy and Tony Chavez left the stake out on the stolen car and took up their positions in front of the hotel. You got any idea when they're coming back? No, sir. I told those two detectives I was here. Or was it you I told? It was this fellow and I. Oh, yeah. I didn't remember things I say so good. But I study faces. Am I bleeding? No, you're not. Why should I be? I'm not shaving. Are you the manager here? No. This place belongs to Cla Claude. Claude who? Tinney. Well, and you're in charge now, is that it? Only when Claude's not around. This is one of his places. How many has he got? Only one. But this is one of his places. Yeah, now listen, maybe you better leave that bottle alone until we get this thing straightened out, huh? Oh, <laughs> no. I don't, I don't hit it heavy anymore. Just a little nip now and then. It's drafty in here. Hey, Clark, where's this door lead to? Oh, no. No, no, you, no, you, you must not go in here. Get out of the way. Oh, get out of I save old bottles to Regman and gives me a penny each for them. All right, get them back in there. How about this room over here? Is that a storage room? Oh, that's a linen closet. We uh, keep all our linen in here. Yeah, this'll do. That's better than waiting in the car. There are a couple of chairs in there. I'll send the boys back when they come in. Tell them nothing. Well, how are they going to know that you're here? We'll tell them. You tell them nothing, understand? All right, sir. Now, now then, if you give me your names, I'll make sure the boys get your message. Now, you listen to me. You stand here and read that magazine. You don't do anything, you don't say anything. You got that? Okay. That's the way you want it. That's the way we want it. Oh, just a minute. I just want you two boys to know that this whole deal... It's okay by me. Well, you want to borrow it? You read it. It's okay by me. What's that smell? Bleach, I guess. Strong. Yeah. What time is it? Can you see your watch? No. How do you get one of those watches with a luminous dial? Yeah. What's he doing? Just took another drink. I hope he doesn't louse things up. Mm. Boy, that smell's giving me a headache. The air's bad in here. Doesn't help. Say, who rented you boys this room? Did Claude rent you this room? Claude Tinney, this is one of his places. Yeah, yeah, we know. What do you want him for? Now, look, you're going to have to stay at that desk and stay away from this room. We don't want the men we're looking for to know we're here. Do you understand? Say, all kidding aside, how much did Claude nick you for this room? Now, you look. Oh, I know. I'll get you a bigger room as soon as they have vacancy. Meanwhile, make yourself right at home. And if you want to wash up before dinner, you can use my room. It's okay. My room. I could sure use a cigarette. Wait a minute. That's it. There's two of them. Yeah? Can you see who it is? Pick up our suitcases. You want all of them? No, just the tan one there. The other guys will be in to pick up theirs. It's Carver and Malik. Come on. Police officers, get your hands up. What's going on? Stand here? still. What's the beef? I'll shake them, Joe. Put them down. Get them up. 38. 45 automatic. Put your hands down. You keep yours up. Hands in back of you. Let me have your cuffs, too. You're gonna put cuffs on me? You can put your hands down. All right, where are your pals? What pals? Cliff Small and George Shum. We know you're running with them. If you know that, then you know where they are. How old are you? 18. What's your name? Julius Carver. Everything okay? Yeah, Tony. Any sign of the other two? Didn't see him. Car's still staked out. Nobody's come near it. Okay, you and Jack want to take these two downtown. Frank and I will wait for Shum and Small. Right. See you down there. Here, take their guns, will you? Here, Tony. Right. Let us have your cuffs, will you? Thanks. Okay, let's go. 
You got everybody. This is it, huh? We're gonna wait for the other two. That's only two of them. Now, look, play it straight. Stay away from that linen room. Well, how long are you gonna stay in there? The chambermaid starts making the beds around 7 a.m. She's gotta get in there for the linen. It's only 10, 15. We got lots of time. We change the sheets three times a week in this hotel. Claude's orders. This is one of his hotels. Tinny, you know, short, far, long upper lip. Not a worry in the world. Yeah, I wish he'd leave that bottle alone. Yeah, that disinfectant's sure strong, isn't it? Yeah. Forgot about that pup. Yeah, that'll be the tip off. I get him. Gee, he's sure cute. I'll bet he's hungry. Yeah, I'll put him on the floor. Let's step on him. Say, so you going to wait for the two other boys? Yeah, that's right. Will you get away from the door? Well, I'm trying to help all I can. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate that. Say, that fuzzy little dog of theirs is running all around the lobby. We got him in here with us. Well, you better go out there and get him. He's barking. He'll tip him off. Yeah, we understand. Just go back to the desk, will you? All right, then. You stay here. I'll go see if I can catch him. If he comes around again, he'll have to wait in here. Hey, listen. I've been looking all over the lobby. You fellas are in the clear. What do you mean? The dog, it's gone. You fellas are in the clear. Yeah, we know. He's in here with us. Now, will you stay away from this door? It's okay. The dog's gone. Boy, I'll be lucky to come out of this one alive. Wait a minute. Hey, give me my suitcase, huh? Yes, sir. It's right here. Small and chum. My friend's back yet? Police officers, get your hands up. Higher. All right, put your hands down. We have your cuffs, Joe. Put them down. What are your names? I'm Cliff Small. Who's he? George Shum. How old are you? Nineteen. You cops? If we weren't, you'd be in a lot more trouble than you are. Well, that's all of them. Yeah. Now let's feed this dog, huh? Say, so you want to give us a hand? Bring those bags out the car for us? I'm sure going to have to explain to Claude about this. Sure, that's all right. Bring the bags, huh? You fellas forgot to register. <laughs> Twelve fifteen a.m. The prisoners were taken down to the city jail and booked on suspicion of robbery. After the suspects were questioned, we made out the necessary reports. Frank went across the street to the Federal Cafe and picked up a bottle of milk and a few slices of bread. He was sure hungry, huh? Yeah, he seemed to be. How'd we make out? Well, here, you can read it. Four stolen cars, eight known robberies up in San Francisco that they copped out to. Three jobs in Portland, they admitted. You remember that Bakersfield liquor store hold up about four weeks ago? The Watson job, they pulled that too? Yeah, and probably a lot more. They haven't told us all of it yet. Got out an APB. We'll probably get a lot more wants on them. Well, that's it. None of them old enough to vote. They committed practically every crime in the book. Just one thing left to work out. What do we do with the pup? Belonged to Carver. Signed a release, said to get rid of him. Well, how about the pound? They'll find a home for him. Oh, no. Not this little guy. Why don't you take him, Tony? You got kids, haven't you? You got a deal. Aquí, aquí, perito. Tu madre era cali, pero de hoy en adelante eres pero policía. What do you say, Joe? I don't know. Don't ask me. How about it, Tony? <laughs> Your mother was a cali, but from now on you're a police dog. December 21st, a hearing was held in the district attorney's office in and for the county of Los Angeles, state of California. In a moment, the results of that hearing. The suspects were released to the San Francisco authorities where they were tried and convicted on eight counts of robbery in the first degree. Robbery in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years. A hold was placed on them by the state of Oregon.
Julius Harley Carver and Fred Philip Malik were tried and convicted of the same charges and are now serving their terms in the state penitentiary, San Quentin, California. <laughs>